um, area in Barangay Santo Nino? Uh, wala kay ko mas sulti nga mga issues here in Barangay Santo Nino, sir. The only thing is kanang the road, sir. It is very small nya. Sa- samot na if na yung mga occasions, sir, kay ang parking, kay wala mang ka- tungod sa gamay nga road, kay mag-park ng bisag-asa ang mga vehicles there. Onya, ang sa res- ang arisad, sir, kay mostly kay ang nag ang here kay mga residential nagdaghan ang residential here in Santo Nino like mm. nag dikit-dikit ang mga mga houses like more squatter like naapo diri here kanang kanang blue one the blue one sir the institutional mm. it's cement <laughs> it is cemetery sir nya naapo yung mga balay-balay po din ha, ha sir mm-hmm. okay okay so mostly residential areas, open space, and like a cemetery. So not much business ah. going on in this area. Ko oh, answer na aray, ay wala ka, wala rajuk ka ayo sir. Hmm. But I think the advantage of that is you don't have much problems with flooding or lack of uh, power and food. Uh, na aray flooding in one area rasad sir like maabot sa nis ang koan. Ah, yeah. asa dapat. Ay, kanang sa my red, sir. Ah, sa center. Sa no, no, sir. Sa ah, center. Here? Yes, kana, sir. They ah, have... okay. I wonder why. Maybe wala na develop ang kanang drainage in that area. Oo, oh, oh, sir. Wala kayo siya ma-develop din ha. Kay... Kanang singan, ano eh. I, I don't know, sir, sir. I don't know sa that, sir. Kay... Ara man yun, for me, mag-flood di ha. Dapit ang mm. area. Mm. Okay, you Maabot don't have to. Maabot siya sa tuhod siya. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that, Jiza. Uh, let me. Oh, I did have. Do I have the rubric? I don't have the rubric here. Let me just write that down. Uh. <laughs> Wait, I, can, I have an Excel file. Okay, let me just move that here. Close this, close this, close this. So many tabs already. Thank you. I'll just put 10 there. Um, this is basically free 10 points. Next, we have Caspe. Caspe. No, not like this canvas. I think you should be near at the top. Oh my gosh. Do, 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 do. All right, let's take a look. So, it's Caspe here. Hello. Hi, sir. Good evening. Okay, good evening. So let me just, wow, this looks nice. This is Qatar. Oh, yeah, you're the one from Qatar. So what yes, do you think, uh, what did you learn about your um, city? Um, the land zoning in Qatar is um, actually arranged by its function, like literally. Like for the orange, for the orange color, it's the residential. For the blue, it's the industrial. I actually past like two pdfs because the other pdf is like the zone for the whole qatar so it's a bit bigger than and you need to zoom in. you need to zoom in to see the colors in it so i just mm. the arrow the arrow the black arrow there i i placed what is my place is where mm. i live that so the there's the 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 black arrow i placed is located in the orange which is the residential it's actually a mixed um mixed use residential um the green is for the open space and the purple is for the an institutional um, buildings so as i have mentioned before traffic congestion is very prominent in the downtown doha capital city center because all the biggest companies and the high-rise buildings are, and offices are located there so with that it is expected that there's more vehicles in there that, that will be that will be passing around here also there's more pollution in that area compared to the others mm, quick question where is the downtown can the downtown center be seen in this map uh there sir in the in the purple lines. Ah, here yes, ah, this sir. is it ah okay so these are at least you have like four i think major motorways or highways going to downtown yes sir yeah okay but even then it's still congested yes sir because like Mm -hmm. um the office hours are like the same 
they're the officers are like ha- happening in the same time. Mm. Yes, that's the that's the rule. Like everywhere you go, uh, of offices open at eight and close at five, or like nine to five. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, and actually, the industrial area is not really seen there, but it's like located in one place. It's actually the second PDF. Mm-hmm. It's a bit heavy, I think. I'll just download it. This might take a while. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's surviving. <laughs> it's surviving. But that just goes to show, like, even if you have, how wide do you think these roads are, like going to downtown Doha? Um, our highways are like um, six, like six lanes. Six lanes on both ends, or total six lanes. Total. Ah, uh, okay. So three lanes from, going. From my place, lanes. going there. Hmm. Mm. Okay, so that just highlights that even if you have six lanes of roads and four four of those roads with six lanes, you will still experience traffic congestion. So um, that's something that uh, people in Cebu City and the Philippines have been sort of struggling with. Now. It's not the amount of roads that will solve traffic congestion. It's really how you plan your city. And the congestion is happening in Doha as well because you're living further away from where you work. So ideally, there would should there should be more like mixed uses. That's the current thrust, but still, it's not one hundred percent like a silver bullet because each place, each country has their own culture, their own like uh, uh, behaviors that will affect um, like their work hours. Not not well, not their work hours, but their travel preference, like whether they want to take public transportation or private transportation. So thank you for that, uh, Darlene. Sorry, I'm just like going through everyone very fast. I'll give you more comments like uh, later on. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Okay, next we have, uh, where is it? Uh, Mondare, China. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Wait, I'll, I'll just present for uh, it, it will go faster. Okay, Mondare, sir. China. Okay. So let, tell us about your area and the issues that sort of can uh, na, na highlight because you studied the zoning map. Um, the, the issue that I presented from the last activity, sir, was the new um, supposed to be tourist spot here in my barangay in Gairan, Katong mm-hmm. Mountain, sir. Mm-hmm. Ah, and, here. Um, yeah, there. Yeah. Um, um, looking at the zoning map, sir, um, it is mostly residential, as you can see. Pero mm-hmm. kanang within those residential pages or napad yung mga dagko nga mga laghanga spaces nga mga kanang unli- um, inhabited pa sir ba? So like mga green areas pa siya. Ako lang lang siyang gi- inanaktanan. Ako na lang gi-group into mm-hmm. kanang residential kay mooman dyan siyang apart. And then ang kanang mga walay color sir kay those are the open space inhabited uh, mga open spaces mm-hmm. mga green areas. And as you can see um the commercial areas there, kay na adapit sa top ng part, top left. So mm. that is the public market located in Gairan. And na ay gamay dira nga institution, which is the jail in Bugo, the one sa Bugo jail area. Mm, the yeah. Bugo jail. And, <laughs> yeah, the Bugo jail. And kanang may, may pagkala 30 nga na rotate gamay sir is the school, public school. And lastly, kanang naasa ubos na blue is the koan, um, new. Barangay Hall sa Gairan dan dira sa kuan dira. This commercial area. Dito sa ubos sir. Ah uh, ubos? Asa asa dito. Kanang kanang na sa center dira. Uh, ah okay okay. Muna siya ang Barangay yeah. Hall. So I think that the issue about the um the new tourist spot nga place is sort of like re- kanang kuan ra kanang related ra siya sa zoning nga kuan kay because Gairan is the is one of the rural side, mangit sir. And even though nga, it is the most populated barangay in Bugo, um, people um still use it as a, a people once likes to use it as a resident residential area, sir. I think because of its um strategic location report we're in, you can access the city's um amenities like the grocery, the hospitals, etc in a 10 from um 10 to 15 minutes rang a ride and then you can also live in a a rural the rural life rapid service and also the sa coastal areas sir so you have 
all in Gairan Rajun, sir. Mm, so, the view of the beaches. Uh, yeah. The hospital is like in another barangay? Yes, sir. Pero doon Rajun kayo, sir. Mm, 15 minutes, not bad. Mm. Uh, and then, I think maong residential, uh, wala po kayo commercial spaces is because um, I think di po kayo mo boost ang commercial space if imi ubutang siya dire sa gairan sir kay mostly residential use man siya so it is ko ana it is more regulated sa such sir nganong mm. wala kayo commercial spaces except of course dere sa public market yeah public market yes so i think uh ang nindot and if they can maintain this kind of proportion pro the danger of something like this uh as we seen earlier na the population might increase so much na they'll spill out so if you're going to have this area all like um, residential, um, what will happen is everyone will need to like drive out like 15 minutes out. And then it's manageable now because the population isn't too high at, let's see, 10,000 10, people. So deep is traffic. So what if my next 10, 20 years, my 20,000 people na siya sumag, sugod, sugod na on traffic. So that would be kanang something that uh, you could sort of inform your uh, local government about. <laughs> um, they're not. Um, ako ang yung parents sir kaya nagwork magod sa city hall. Ako ang. Mm. Mm, oh, yeah. oh, very good. Yeah. So um, makabati mo ko sa ilang mga chika sir about mga plans sa city and um they're not. Wala ko kabati sa ilang mga development sa gairan. They they want to develop the more sa city proper just sir which is katong gipatakura nila og strip mall and ato and is a commercial but, area dili dili dira sa gairan sir adto jud sa city proper jud mao ang ilang for me i talk about like developing that part developing that developing that area dili uh, asa ang city proper more uh, to the west more to the west sir ah uh, dili na side uh-huh. ani sambag dili pa sir aw nahan ba gyud ah okay okay so that's that's interesting. Very good. Thank you for that. Thank okay, you. Okay, next we have uh Co Nathan. Uh sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy thank you, Tama. Good evening, Annie. Let me just open up your page. C C C Okay, let's see. This is Kabankalan. So did anything become uh, clearer or like uh, even more confusing when you when you did your zoning map for your area? Um, I noticed that there's like a lot of, uh, it's very, very highly residential, mm. especially because there are like, there's, I think there are three subdivisions in our barangay and there's also like clusters of um, informal settlers. Mm. And like the highly, because it's very highly residential, it, it, it makes sense with the, with the traffic, with the traffic pattern, especially along the ML Kazan Avenue, like that goes mm-hmm. right in the middle of the barangay. Mm-hmm. And it's not very um, highly commercial, and I noticed just that, 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 that most of the commercial establishments are around, are around the, just around the street, the the ML Kazan Avenue. And then mm-hmm. I noticed they're just like small restaurants, um, sorry, sorry, stores. And then when it comes to the issues, sir, I, I noticed like a pattern, Jude, and it. Um, it, it lines up with like uh, uh, some research that I did also because uh, the Butuanan River at like the border of the of our barangay, mm-hmm. it's very uh, heavily uh, polluted, and it's because there's a lot of um, informal settlers that are also like living along the bank of the river, and as well as industrial like companies like industrial corporations, and then because I did research on the Butuanan River, like when I was in high school, and mm. I found that most of the reason why it's very pollu- uh, polluted is because there's poor uh, waste management and a lot of um, industrial companies uh, dump their waste into the river. And mm, plus, there's these are also the, the companies oh, in yes, purple. Sir. Yes, sir. It's like so. Like I can really like see the pattern because it's like situated close to the river. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you for. I think this is very straightforward. There's not much else to be said. Like, how do you get people to stop uh, throwing waste into the river? You need to have like laws against that. I think we have laws. The next problem is implementation. Like, do we even have the people to stop them? <laughs> do we have the 
<laughs> and the problem in the Philippines is because uh, uh, I'm sure we all know there's a little bit of uh, under the table payments. <laughs> yeah, and I think also sir, it's like it's like a geography thing because the entirety of the Butuanan River like runs straight through Metro Cebu, so. Uh, yes, it could be not just your area, but other areas are also mm -hmm. dumping into the river. I yes, sir. That makes sense. Yes, very good. Okay, sorry, I have to go through to the next one. Uh, Declaro Francis. Yes, sir. I'm here, yes, sir. Okay, let's see. So, did anything uh, become more pronounced or clearer, or like uh, did it become oh, like you... more confusing when you did the uh, uh, resident the, the zoning map? Um, at first, I was confused, sir, with the zonings because it wasn't really that clear also with the Google Maps, so that's why I was confused. But um, I was really surprised that the population was more than 30,000. And mm -hmm. the primary problem is the, um, what is this, the informal settlers um, f usually found, um, they're found uh, along the, by the Mactan Channel, sir. Uh, here to the uh, north yes. of the site yes. yes along the bridge Mactan channel and the problem with that is as because the barangay grew uh, five times the population in 40 years um, some of these homes pushed their way into the channel and also made homes along the shallow parts mm. of the, by the beach mm. there's like a huge community there and because of that, there's like improper, uh, what is this? The, the sewage, yeah. it's a big problem. Ah, no and waste. And also garbage, garbage mm. disposal, the waste management of the, not only here in the barangay, but also the whole city, which makes the water, um, water pollution bad, mm. adds to the Mactan Channel. Yes, sir. Okay, That's good. That's the primary problem with the barangay. What is this one institutional building there? I, that's a school there, sir. Ah, okay, it's good. It's a school there. That's good. That's also got... made for a lot of growth of the houses because there's a school nearby. Mm -hmm. Is it a public school or a private? Public school, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Or at least a huh, nice school there, so... Uh, at the very least, the people here are getting educated. So that's the first step. <laughs> um, I think it's elementary and high school. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm just looking at your graphs here. So everything is up and up. Households yeah. is up. Number of households is up. Again, this one is annual household. Average annual average household size is going down. So like more I households, but lesser people. I think that's because of like, there's a lot of like apartment spaces here because a lot of workers try to live here because the place is near to like Mepsa. Exactly. Okay, a lot of good. industrial areas to work, to give work to people. Okay, good. Sige. Nice. Thank you for that. Next, we yes, have sir. so many tabs. Next, we have Gonzaga Ryan. Let me just open up your page. Uh, G, G, G. Here we go. So is uh, Ryan here? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Wow, this is really nice. This is the actual uh, Butuan City zoning map? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, okay. So you see, uh, Butuan City is this uh, area here in the yellow? Mm, yes, sir. And then what uh, are these? The whole, sir. I mean, the whole right good? Side, sir, is the population uh, map for the uh, Kanisa the right side is so where is this? Ah, uh, kanina kasi kanina pa it um zoom in sa uh, sa kanina highly highly that high density na points sa barangay. Mo ni siyang kanina ka square? Ah, uh, no sir. Na kanin diri na part kay this one sir. Kanina yellow and mostly mostly yellow and red sir. Okay. Oh, so oh, wait. Which one? This is the zoomed in, no? Ang nasa left. Yes, sir. Okay, and then asa siya da pit diri. Um, here, sir. Kanin. Kanina? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Just making sure. Okay, so uh, what did you notice um, after analyzing your uh, zoning map? And the um, I noticed that there are a lot of um, open spaces like forest, sir, and then 
uh, concentrated in um, this part lang and one part um, uh, resident culture together with the commercial. Hmm. And uh, are there like, uh, is it causing like traffic congestion or like problems with pollution? Yeah, more, more problems uh, regarding traffic in this part is a uh, um, as this part sa barangay is under right here, uh, unlike sa low density na barangay sir. Like here? Yeah, yes sir. Mm, okay, so they're traveling. Is it people, like, let me just draw an arrow. Is it people going here or like like that or going to that barangay to the to the east? Uh, the first one sir, going to the first one. Ah, they're so this is the city center here. That's the center here, yes. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, I can imagine the development pattern is these are the only roads sort of similar to what's going on in Cebu City. There's only one sort of major thoroughfare and everyone has to go along that to get to the city center. So that's okay. causing the traffic. So I guess the only way would be, or like not the only way, but one solution might be to spread out the city center by the site, but that's very difficult to do. It should be, it's more of a long-term solution than a short-term solution. Short-term, maybe they could, uh, what do you call this? Um, since it's already developed like this, maybe have smaller business areas here, but really depends on like what kind of work the people are looking for. Uh, what kind of work is available in the city center? Um, not a like, a BPO, a BPO center, that, that part, sir. Ah, BPO. And uh, let, let, let's go mga businesses, no, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see the population data is also going up and up. I would expect this to continue, especially because there's so much room to develop. Okay, thank you for that, Ryan. So let's just go quickly. You got Ong, Christian. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Let me just find your submission, G. Oh, here we go. Sige, so what did you notice? Wow, this is a big area. Yeah, kalang. Kutik is siya pag kalang trace sa zoning, sir. But um, based sa ako nakitaan sa Google Maps niya, kanang laagan masad ko, sir, sa umu before, like before, like mm -hmm. uh, pandemic. So this is what. I've seen, I, I've, I've observed, mm -hmm. um, usually kanang, TISA is kanang filled with uh, residential zones and like more, about half siguro or like or more kay na, uh, na ay mga informal settlers na just stay sa like in some areas labi na sa, sa riverside and even sa subdivisions like here sa La Paloma or sa Santa Teresita somewhere somewhere sa um upper right there yeah somewhere there and then over here i uh, no, no no like i'm going left sorry. yeah upper sa right side sir lower right side <laughs> yeah somewhere ah uh, higher <laughs> there is there ah uh, what is it there that's uh, la paloma subdivision and i uh, know uh santa teresita village um Mas nya daghan sad sa my riverside sir and then um yeah mo to like I've observed na kanang daghan sad like due to this sir kay nakakause sad siya traffic and then nakakause sad siya solid I can uh, waste management mm -hmm. sad na issues sir kay since dako kayo ang tisa sir nya ang ang garbage kanang truck ganit sir kay Usahay, like once or once a week or like even once a month na sila mo visit sa mga subdivisions and so on. Yeah. And then same sa to like tungod sa overpopulation niya sir um kanang mag traffic gani like especially sa main road sir especially like during kanang if mag work na sila. Yeah. Yeah. And then nasa dili like going there down sa ubos. Uh, going south. Yeah, going south. Okay, sige. So, um, very good. So <laughs> notice that the commercial areas tend to follow the major thoroughfares yeah. and then move. 
mo build around then they have mga residential areas or it could be the yes. resident residential areas come first and then attract uh, commercial areas yeah it's yes, how you sir. manage this land everything is up 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 in at tisa uh, mostly because you have a lot of land to develop yeah Maybe, like uh, on the Cajon circle like develops and sila lands there one of the traffic kay maka, um, ang truck sila kay makakas ang traffic kay ilang i-block ang road niya di na lang park properly yeah how wide is the road by the way uh, estimate lang um i i don't know pero like uh mga two two cars per lane i think sir ah two, so four lanes na lang yeah four lanes na lang yeah mm. so muna grabe na kayo <laughs> yeah okay yeah. thank you Christian. thank you sir so we have like oof we have 10 more people to go uh let's see rona marie are you here yeah yes sir Okay, let me just okay, you got it there. So very quickly, so we have like 30 minutes left. Um anything, any patterns that you found interesting uh, while making your zoning map? Or does it does it like uh, align with the population data? Uh yes, sir. So I've noticed that uh, looking from the zoning map, it's mostly of residential area and mostly commercial areas are found nearby shores so with this sir um the problems regarding the garbage dispose improper garbage disposal um especially along the the uh the sea area or the shore area um is becoming more of like great a great problem guy a lot of people are already residing a lot of informal settlers are reside residing along those shores and mostly commercial put sir kanong we have here the in cordova roro port nga mostly people kay magsigig laag dito for like kaon and ana then nindot man ang view kay kanang beach so maybe mo mo koan siya mo dagdag siya sa like mga people going there kay pataka og labay yeah, ko an put sir another thing geographically kanang there's an island an islet of part of Cordova. Ah mm-hmm. uh, no, the ko an sir kanang zoom out nga portion okay. uh, that one. That's Hilutongan Island and mm-hmm. it is uh it kanang it has lack of kanang sor- source when it comes to water and power because uh it is separated from the mainland and Mecco and um mcwd are unable to reach out like kind of mag hard it's hard for them to reach yeah, over that be island for them especially now oh, okay. to develop there's a city uh, yes sir then i would just like to add sir since there's a kind of upcoming naman mahuman ang cclex or the cordova cebu link expressway then that would that will might greatly um add up to the traffic condition of cordova sir Mm, where does the bridge connect, Yane? I think it's over kanang duol sa koan sir kanang magbabag dapit. Eh, sa San Miguel, the Nai Road, kanang babag right road. Here. Is it going uh, like that? Oh, no? uh, padong sa Talisay. Yeah, this affect this area to be even more crowded. Uh, mm-hmm. But land prices will go up because of that new bridge and more commercial yes. um, developers might want to like buy the land here so increase you know among property values so it's Mm-mm. both good and bad <laughs> <laughs> good sa tag-iya atong land okay thank you next we have aris let me just quickly go through your work here aris 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 okay oh so this is guadalupe the most populated barangay in cebu good afternoon sir okay so Makes sense, man. No, zoning no is mostly residential with like commercial areas along the major thoroughfares. What problems have you noticed in this area, or like uh, what possible solutions? Ah, uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, so the issues of the barangay sir is mainly due to the to the the population, sir. No, mm. like traffic congestion, trash and garbage problems, and flooding. So as we all know, traffic congestion is, of course, due to people like. Uh, like almost all everyone in Guadalupe has cars and the and the roads are like very small sir ba? Mm. like they were designed in like the old the old times ba? not for the population the barangay has today and then the 
garbage and trash collection problem, sir, is because of, again, the, the population. It's too huge for a, barang a barangay, sir, but like the barangay cannot handle the amount of population. And then the flooding is also due to the trash collection. So that issue led to another issue. Which it is could also flooding. be because of these developments here. This is the, I think this is Monterasas over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I think there was a big issue where Monterasas like, did a lot of like earthworks and that caused flooding, especially somewhere here in the lower areas. Like, somewhere yes, here because the, the water would flow down. The, it would then go to the main road, sir. Yeah. And they had to like readjust their uh, wastewater management. Their wa basically, they needed to add more drainage systems in their subdivision. Yes, sir. I was like way back, uh, maybe like 24. 15, 2014, something like that. Okay, very good. Thank you. So Thank you. again, similar pattern. If there is a major thoroughfare, that's where businesses will go to. And then it's either, I think more often than not, the residential areas come first because in Cebu City, we already have the commercial areas in the city center. And then what happens, everybody was leaving the, leaving the city center and now the commercial areas like, have to follow the uh, residences, especially all the way up here in Guadalupe and like, wherever else. So uh, ideally, um, back in the day, like 1990s, uh, there will be some kind of policy to manage this growth, but now we have to like uh, sort of, what they call this, uh, live with what we have or like try to improve this kind of condition, especially since uh, Guadalupe also has um, Tasma sa magkano kanang COVID infections sa Guadalupe because of of the number of people living together. Yes, sir. It's very hard to control the people, sir. Yeah. They understand oh, okay. kayo, on, sir. Yes. Okay. I have some people. I have some friends who live in uh, Guadalupe. Next, we have. Uh, wait, we're done with. Uh, is Christian uh, go? There's there are two Christians in this class. And. Uh, what happened to Wayne? What is up to Wayne? Go, 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 go. Oh no, it's Delphine there, sorry. Delphine Christian. My eyes. My eyes are going. Is Delphine Christian here? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. So this is, where is this? Uh, it's a barangay in Talisay, sir. Mohon, city of Talisay. Okay. Yeah. So um, did the development pattern match the kanang population data? I see it's mostly residential. I think yeah, this is supposed yeah, to be sir. yellow. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, as I was doing my zoning maps sir i noticed that there are a lot of um subdivisions and also koan, like you know, mga cluster of houses so so uh, it makes sense and sir na na ang population uh, the graph population population uh increased sir <laughs> and and uh because of that sir uh there are a lot of mga problems that that uh that kanang that are seen throughout the barangay like kanang mga uh, pollution or like also traffic is like one big uh, problem in mohon sir and mm -hmm. um since uh talisay is becoming like a developed city sir uh, a lot of commercial strips are like a lot of Commercial buildings are being developed there, sir. Like, uh, like more commercial strips. Yeah, especially yeah, then, it's a Fidel Bas Road. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Mm. Okay, I, I'm just a quick question. Did you use uh, QGIS to draw this map? Uh, no, sir. I used, uh, I used Photoshop, sir. Ah, I used Photoshop. Ah, okay, okay. I think we need to learn. Are you guys learning uh, GIS this sem, or like, is it like? next um i'm not sure <laughs> uh, but it might be a useful thing to just like pick up you can like learn it like in uh 
uh, what they call this, a couple hours just drawing with QJS. But Photoshop's also pretty good. So uh, very interesting. Uh, I think Fidel Bass would be, be the major thoroughfare because that's where all the commercial areas are yes, uh, located. And then over here, I, I'm guessing this is more mountainous area going here. Yeah, that's, that's like a big concert, a big subdivision. Uh, it's called um, Corona del Mar. Ah, okay, okay. If I'm correct. Okay, so Cebu going to the sit going to the city is here. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Sigi. So a bunch of the smaller barn guys, all population going up, mostly yes, because sir. I think. Um, it's because there's so much land to develop. So it's attractive for people who want to build subdivisions. It's attractive for um, small businesses who want to uh, sort of sell to those subdivision areas. So this will just continue to grow. And then without proper management, you'll have the, the, the similar like problems like flooding, um, uh, waste management, and uh, traffic congestion. So it's just how we manage land. Okay. We're good. Ah, it's already 6.30. I think we can get through the rest. Uh, Mercado, Vaness. Or is it Vanessi? Hi, sir. Hello. So, let's see. Uh, trying to find your work here. Maybe, I know that I'm in the seas. Maybe, see. Mercado, sir. And, uh, Mendoza. Here we go. So how do you pronounce your first name? Vinice. Ah, Vinice. Okay. So Vinice. Uh, let's see. Barangay Poblacion in Barili. So population data is over. It's like going up. So it's still a kind of growing uh, barangay. Yes. So uh, what did the zoning map reveal to you? Like, the problem so kanong flooding sir, because there's a river like near so mm. barangay sir, and then there's kanong murag small branches nga murag mo spread siya sa like sa barangay sir ba mm -hmm. so if kanang mag rain sir kay mo overflow ang katong mga branches sa river sir mm -hmm. and then another ko answer kay ang unpaved roads like as you can see sir kay um the commercial is commercial area is big kay um sa like ang ubang barangay sir like kanang sa hapitan nga ah, like sa hapitan dumanog and etc sir like there are sila like mo kuan gani sir like mo baligya for for ah, like kanang for eco economic na purpose sir ba and then another like like mostly like the regions lang mo, mo circulate for for the ko answer ka ng ilahang mga ibalikya gani sir so murag ang uh, like there's a lot of trucks nga ka ng murag mo go in and go out sa barangay sir ba then like tana sir mo kuan siya sa roads gani sir then yeah ina na sir mm -hmm. so flooding shortage of houses unpaved roads and power outages as well ah, okay so it could be a sign that it's developing so fast na ang veco couldn't supply the like the necessary infrastructure to power those buildings so really um this is one of those examples now cebu city is growing so fast that the infrastructure cannot keep up so yeah. that's some that's something we need to like be aware of how we deal with that there's so many ways that i mentioned earlier it's just like how do we make those plans and implement those plans thank you uh venice thank you sir. next we'll have kyle Kyle. Um, good evening, sir. Um, Kyle cannot make it today, sir, because he has an emergency, sir. Ah, okay. So hopefully he'll tell me about that emergency later. <laughs> the yes, next, sir. we have Deves, Colleen. Is uh, Deves here? Okay. sir. Okay, no, no. Okay, so I'm guessing if you notice like a lot of yellow, that means it's a new or like a growing uh, barangay. And if you look at the population data, it's also up, up, up. <laughs> yes, sir. especially the household population. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sa, uh, mostly sa Kanzo Hall, it's a barangay in, it's the one of the residential barangay in Talisay compared to Uban. Ang Uban, kay mostly they used it for industrial and commercial. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, like the whole population is being dumped to our side, especially it's near the river and the ocean. 
tungurag mas babor sila o kanang resources. So aside from that, sir, kay most of the um especially the automobile companies or the uh ki, especially Kia or some Chinese na automobile company na nasa car car they use this the place here as a murag an utility space or kanang warehouse because it's near the delivery hub and it's also really easy or and cheap to transfer to car car I mean to car car and to carbon. So okay. Uh, just quick question which way is car car is it going uh someone which way is north is okay. oh, oh. Kind of, Ah, uh, not to, no, no. Depending sa kay kung ano man good, it's very um, reg, the country shag roads. Pero kung oh. ganan ka pas pas ka pa pa the other side, atong general na, direction yeah, is going yeah. to the south, di ba? Car car yeah. is south man mm. Cebu, and this is going to Cebu City and uh-huh. Talisay over here, di ba? Mm. I'm correct, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Like that. It really is like in the middle of like uh, development, so you have a mm. lot of vehicles passing through. Kanso, uh, aside from that, taghan kay dumpsters nila ka ng mga old na machinery dump. That's why like, taghan kay kanahan mo scrap nila o mga metals. Mm, so, kung mga kind of like landfill situation. Mm-hmm. But that also causes the flooding in our place. And mm-hmm. also like the uh, unmanagement of the kaan garbage. At the same time, sir, aside from the residential kay kanang, not all of them are recorded. To be part of the uh, mm, like mm. legally recorded legal uh, dumping yeah. sites. Are these say, the one, industrial areas that you highlighted? Yes, yes, they're kind of pink and red. Ah, okay. And blue. And then consider kind of that road there, that main road in the middle. That's actually a bridge. <laughs> ah, under that, okay. yeah. Under that is basically mga squatters na. Mm. So, oh yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ang duol sa tanan, ang tupas sa tanan sa kaya ang river. So it's really problematic yet when it comes to mm-hmm. the management of waste. Mm-hmm. I think for this kinds of situation, especially the Philippines, the most we can do like from the architecture side is really make the building as uh, self-sustaining as possible. It has its own rainwater management, uh, wastewater management, also like its own like uh, garbage management system built in because like the infrastructure outside our sites usually are overloaded or don't exist. So that could be uh, incentivize you guys to create more uh, sustainable buildings. As, um, that would really help with uh, Cebu City as a whole. Cebu province, I mean. Okay, thank you for that, Colleen. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more students to go. Hopefully we can reach. Uh, Jean, are you here? Um, yes, sir. Okay, let's see. Uh, I hope the Lira Madungog among dogs. Ah, okay. Ra. A, B, C, D, here. So, uh, ni match up right yung population data with the development. I can see it already is. So, population going up, and then like land use is all residential. Uh, yes, majority sir. residential. Okay. Sigi, so what else have you noticed na mo sort of coincide ng power source, water source? Let me see the issues here. Salt um, water intrusion, flooding, lack of drainage system. Makes sense. <laughs> Yes. Um, what I noticed here, sir, is that um, just like the other nearby municipalities and city, ang uh, nagagrabi ang growth rate compared to the Philippines growth rate, um, mas uh, much bigger ang salilo answer compared to mm. sir, five point something, and then yes. sa national is just like one point six something. Mm. So I think it's a problem. Um, um, Liluan is currently dealing with. However, I think that the municipality is dealing with it nicely since it has received um, several awards for the recent years. Mm-hmm. Um, like model town, just like that. And then <laughs> the problem here is that ang um, kanabitong na commercial um, with red colors, sir, mm. it's not really really detailed and on zoning maps it's it's not that updated but some of those areas are spreading not towards uh, residential and the problem with that is that a road will not develop but more people are building um industrial factories and warehouses but will not change ang kanang um situations a road like for example ang delivery trucks are 16 wheelers and then the road mm. is just six meters sir mm. so it's really hard to kanang maintain that kind of road and then kanang the companies themselves don't feel responsible to fix kanang the roads mm. 
And then ang result ano is just like what I mentioned, um, flooding in nearby areas and mas dako ang power consumption and water consumption. Mm -hmm. which I think one of the... the yes. yes. Yes, very good. Oh, yes. I just wanted to say, I think also the problem with like uh, the roads put is everything is like, uh, if it's like a residential area, it may mean that it's privately owned. So the government has to buy that land in order to like, or like increase their road widening, like do road like uh, improvements. So that's very a very big like uh, logistical problem. Now. A lot of back and forth between the government and the people living in that area where that warehouse is going to be. Ideally, ang companies may muhatag og kanang some sort of like a portion of their income to improve that road because they're like causing all these problems. But that's a very huge political process where you need to manage several groups of people. And this is where our knowledge and stakeholders comes in and where it becomes really, really messy and challenging. So uh, thank you for that. I didn't know that we had like uh, some good news. Now, Liluan is actually one of the better planned towns in uh, Cebu. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll look into that. So maybe we can have like some, um, uh, what they call this, case studies that could be useful for my postgraduate class. <laughs> okay, you, very good.